From the morning reading, as expected, Fed raises rates a quarter of a percent. Stocks soar, solar sizzles. Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, and Google lead the NDX. Eight sectors moved higher on Wednesday. XLU, XLP, and XLI were the strongest sectors, while XLE was the weakest sector. Breadth strengthened as advancers led decliners 4.59 to 1 on the New York Stock Exchange and 2.75 to 1 on the NASDAQ. The Fed, as expected, raised rates a quarter of a percent, seven years to the day after the last rate decrease. As typical, volatility increased at the announcement and the SBX dropped 14 points in 60 seconds, rose 19 points in the next seven minutes before dropping 13 points in the next 20 minutes, followed by a 23-point rally into the close. We're now officially in a rate hike cycle. The knee-jerk reaction was unusual in that stocks, gold, and note yields all rallied strongly, something we have rarely seen on a day the Fed hikes rates, and never on the day of the initial hike. In the broader sense, the first rate hike didn't lead to anything consistent in stocks or gold, but note yields did have a strong tendency to continue to rise in the weeks and months ahead as the continuous commodity index would show. This is the sixth time the S&P 500 has rallied 1% on back-to-back -back days heading into any Fed Reserve FOMC meeting. It fell back over the next couple of sessions four of the five times, with a small gain after the other. Even with the smaller gains, when stocks rally into these meetings, there has been a consistent tendency for them to give back some gains shorter term. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.47 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of December the 17th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the overnight action, our morning report. First of all, generally bullish all the way around, both in the United States and overseas. The S&P at the time of this cut was up about 8.5 points, or about 0.4 of a percent. Russell up also about 0.4 of a percent, NASDAQ up about half a percent, and the Dow up about 0.4 of a percent. Crude oil up huge, up 3.29 percent. Euro down big, down 1.24 percent. Bonds up good, about two-thirds of a percent. And gold down almost 1 percent. China up almost 2%, Hong Kong up 0.8 of a percent, Japan up about 1.6%, Germany up massive 3.3%, United Kingdom up about 1.5%. In terms of macroeconomic reports for Thursday in the United States, we've got Philly Fed, unemployment claims of the weekly variety, and current account which is related to trade. And then on Friday, um, looks like just one yellow flag report, Flash Services PMI. You do have FOMC member Lacker speaking. Um, probably not as important as um, leading up to this rate hike increase, but you do have an FOMC member out there talking the talk. In terms of current volatility, As you would expect, a lot of volatility has been crushed in recent days. Short-term VIX is down to an 18.81. Um, SKUs also down about 10 points to a 135, though still very elevated there. IV percentiles all in the lower quartile, um, about 24 for the S&P, 22 for the Russell, 20 for the NASDAQ, 25 for the NASDAQ. We had standard deviation moves put in by all four of the U.S. indices yesterday. So, um, and that's important to know. There was also, of course, an up day. In terms of the current charts, we um, have had a trend reversal now. And with this candle here, and we identified this as a reversal candle at the time big wick below the hammer body you had a gap 
and strong continuation pattern and then another gap which did backfill the gap but um, still finished the day with very large body up now a couple things to kind of keep in mind is that we're just kind of back into the prior range so um, we haven't really established ourselves in terms of higher highs or higher lows at this point. Right now, what we have is a trend reversal, and um, that's good. We're up over the cloud. Uh, it turned right where it needed to turn. We said this was the must-turn signal line. Um, we talked about that that morning on our market preview, that the bulls would have to hold this area or that it could get really ugly and could fall over 100 points down into the 1870 areas. The bulls did accomplish that. They reversed intraday right at that level. And then it's been all bulls all the time pretty much ever since. And now you have with the Fed announcement, that's out of the way. And there's really um, no significant macroeconomic news that's expected in the next um, couple days. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes from here. Um, as you heard from the morning reading, you certainly have a tendency when you have this kind of action leading into the Fed to have a little bit of a retracement. Would not be surprised given the, how far we've come, basically coming from, we'll call it 1993, all the way up to... Um, some 2076 area uh, that's about 80 points that we would have something of a retracement uh, you know is not a bit alarming and would not damage a bullish short-term trend now we need to see that um, that retracement if that does happen you know clearly hold and we wouldn't want to see it drop too far back into the cloud before resuming a bullish trend but the real news is going to be can we get to the former all-time high area and can we break those highs until we accomplish that we're really still in a transition market and in a sideways range bound market and the russell also reversal patterns that had come in in the last couple of days, though in a relative sense much weaker than the other indices. NASDAQ, also reversal pattern here, but just right back into the middle of the prior range. So um, we're gratified for this, but at the same time, let's not make too much of this at this time. Our problem all year has been follow through. Okay. And then let's go on to the daily report. We've got a number of important changes here today. We are back to phase two trend reversal. And this was a pretty quick um, uh, almost whipsaw action to where we had the breakdown and then almost uh, in three days really um, had a trend reversal and that led to a confirmed uptrend in IBD. And this is the 11th confirmed uptrend for 2015. The story, of course, all year has been the inability of the bulls to actually follow through and achieve anything on those confirmed uptrends. Uh, this is normally a very, very reliable um, intermediate term signal, and uh, you would normally expect to have only a handful of signals generated during the course of a year. Well, 2015 has been that kind of year, and I'm sure there's many hedge fund managers and money managers out there that are going to be glad to see 2015 wrap up and hope for something that um, leads to better results in 2016. In terms of accumulation distribution score, the S&P still remains a D plus, NASDAQ a D plus, GMI index also uh, retains a warning status at 2 out of 6 and a sell signal since 1210. Decision point scoreboards, no change, still really quite ugly on the short term, though I would expect that that would start to show some changes here in the next day or two if we continue to hold up with this bullish short term pattern. Intermediate term market posture is first day bullish with a flat sentiment line. So um, certainly that's good for the bulls, but let's not make too much of that. It's a first day bullish. We still have a flat sentiment line, so there's no uh, long term power behind this bullish move as of yet 
We do have changes in the position sizing opinion. The portfolio exposure is back to the 100% with the IBD confirmed uptrend. Also, from a volatility standpoint, um, the VIX has been crushed and it's back down into the normal range. So that system is also firing at 100% position size. And as I said, the intermediate term market posture is first day bullish. The S&P 33.2, but upturn. So this is a, you know, a first grade bull uh, over 50 we get much stronger bullish um, but it is um, the beginning and the Dow of course also first day bull Nasdaq is also bullish Russell remains severely bearish in that range up underneath a 20 hedge warning status has changed for today it has dropped to level one so this is a uh, much lower uh, level of relative risk than was the level two plus that we had going into the Fed announcement, but it is still an elevated risk level. This is not to predict that we think that the market will go down or a certain distance down, but it is to say that re relatively there are certain hedge uh, warning status risk still present. In terms of the equity risk short term, we have a six on a one to 10 scale and intermediate term is also qualified as a six. In terms of those specific warnings, a lot of them have come off, but we still have the market and decline warning in place. We still have a elevated skew and we still have the intermarket risk aversion indicators are all still firing as risk off, though there has been some improvement and uh, some of these are starting to show some signs of potentially rolling up, but we've not had crosses of those signals at yet. Fear and greed index is much improved over recent days. It's now a 44, still relatively fearful, but nowhere near what it has been. In terms of special opinions, in terms of option income strategies, VIX is in first day inside the acceptable window so it's okay to initiate new positions for novice traders you might want to consider slow build positions at this point you might want to consider reduced position size or scaling in but uh, it is at this point okay to initiate new positions same thing for cover calls and put selling but again the caveat this is the first day and we'll likely have you know some weakness in the next couple days given how far we've come in the last three days as well as this tendency when we have this strong bullish action to go into the fed day to then backtrack a little bit in the couple days following that doesn't always happen that's probabilities and probabilities are just what they are probabilities not guarantees so consider using uh, con you know, as, as we've had these struggles with this range bound action, defensive structures, and whether you're using cover calls and using one to one ratios of out of the money and in the money strikes, or one to one ratios of high beta and low beta, or scaling into position, same thing with put selling. Make sure you're always keeping position size in the position that you're willing to own should that become necessary. This market is not a healthy bull, and you do not want to treat it as if it were. In terms of sector market posture, you see quite a bit of improvement here, but still this is not a sea of green by any measure. You should take this as a reflection of um, some caution in the market as you start to build more positions. Sector percent change, of course, yesterday was very strong with the exception of energy. Utilities, very interesting. Interest rate sensitive utilities and interest rate sensitive dividend paying stocks were some of the best performers yesterday. Uh, perhaps the certainty of you know what is going forward and that the Fed outlined not just the current rate increase but also the plan going forward for the next 12 months given that things go forward as expected uh, and that would be to increase about once a quarter about a quarter point a time to have an overall increase of about one percent over the next 12 months on top of the um, increase that we had um, just now so kind of keep all that in mind I think that's probably enough for today and let's see we're going to go and go straight to the disclaimers today 
Oh, I will mention this. Obviously, if you find what we're doing here is helpful to your trading, and, and heck, it's not always easy to get all this put together first thing in the morning and so forth and do it for free. So if you find this is helpful, the way you acknowledge, give me a pat in the back and then say, hey, Stephen, keep doing this. We want you to continue. Um, like me on YouTube. Uh, retweet me to your Twitter followers, to your stock Twitter followers. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Those are all acknowledgments that you find this not just helpful, but to uh, encourage me to continue to do this. Direct support, uh, direct email can be sent to support at falconglobaltraders.com. Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review. You see the full disclaimers uh, at this hyperlink here. And we'll see you back here tomorrow morning before the market opens with the Falcon Global Market Preview. Good trading.